Hello welcome to my YouTube this is the third part of what if Ash and Serena traveled together I hope you like this episode like my previous parts of this arc. Let's continue the adventures of Ash and Serena in Kanto region. Like the video and give your valuable comments on it. Let's start the video. Chapter 3, Spiro Attack Ok so Ash has gotten Froki and Serena has gotten Fen Ekin, now like I said the road to Viridian City is going to be a lot different from the anime. I have a surprise on how the Spiro situation will be handled. Enjoy the chapter, and I do not own Pokemon. Pathway to Viridian City Ash Ketchum and Serena Gabina have finally begun their Pokemon journey. Nothing seemed to be eventful as the two were walking down the road, but they enjoyed each other's company. So, Ash, are you going to enter the Pokemon League? Serena asked. Oh, you bet I am Serena, Ash answered, I'm not only going to enter the Pokemon League, but I'm also going to beat the Pokemon League too. And you'll beat Gary too, right? Serena asked with enthusiasm. Of course, Gary might think being ahead of me will make him feel almighty and powerful, but it's the Pokemon League that matters, not who gets there first, Ash said raising his fist. You're going to do great, Serena told Ash. As the two were talking, they were looking at their Pokeballs. Inside the special colored Pokeballs were Ash's Froakie and Serena's Fen Ekin. Knowing what the two Pokemon have been through, they needed to make sure they could gain their trust towards other humans. Hey Ash, do you think we could bring our Pokemon out? Serena asked. Yeah, I don't mind, Ash answered as he got Froka's Pokeball in his hand. That's good because if we want our Pokemon to be fond of other humans than us, maybe having them out of their ball would help, Serena explained. Great idea. Ash exclaimed, with our Pokemon out of their balls, maybe we can get closer with them. With that being said, Ash and Serena took their Pokeballs and brought out Froki and Fen Ekin. The two Pokemon were happy to see their trainers. Froki was fond of Serena, but not completely as it was towards Ash, and Fen Ekin was the same way towards Ash being somewhat trustworthy, not like Serena. Froki, Froki happily said looking at Ash. Fen Ekin, Fen Ekin said looking at Serena. Now Froki, I know you can trust me, but I want you to trust other humans too, Ash said staring at Froki in the eyes, we can start with Serena, and then we can work our way up to other humans. Same here Fen Ekin, I know what you've been through after that Siegfried guy came to terrorize you, but I want you to know not all humans are bad, Serena told Fen Ekin staring into Fen Ekin's eyes, Ash can be a good way to start with gaining your trust towards other humans. If Froki and Fen Ekin wanted to ever get along with humans other than their trainers, they were going to need a lot of love, attention, and care. Siegfried already caused extreme emotional damage to them when they were eggs not just by killing their parents, but also by how inhuman he killed them. One hour later, Ash and Serena along with Froki and Fen Ekin were walking down the road, and things have been peaceful. Ash and Serena just looked into each other's eyes not knowing what the other was thinking while Froki and Fen Ekin were sided by side. Froki Froki, Froki said acting a little romantic. Fen Ekin, Fen Ekin giggled. Hey Serena, do you think Froki likes Fen Ekin? Ash asked with a cheesy smile. I think so, Serena answered looking at Froki's behavior towards Fen Ekin, they look cute together. Well just you and me. They had a history together in Kalos, Ash stated. Yeah, even being born at the same time, Serena said. It didn't look like a secret, but Froka seemed to have a crush on Fen Ekin. The two were best friends in Professor Sycamore's lab back in Kalos when they couldn't accept a trainer. Those two Pokemon were just like Ash and Serena with them having a crush on each other, but the two trainers didn't seem to notice. Then something caught their attention, it was a tiny brown bird. Hey, what's that? Serena asked looking at the tiny brown bird. I know what that is, Ash responded, it's a pigeon. The giant Pokédex that Ash and Serena got wasn't operational at the moment, which is why they needed to get that part in Viridian City. 
Ash was able to learn a little bit about Pokemon though, and he knew that was a Pidgey since there were a lot of them around Kanto. I'm going to try and catch it, Ash said looking at the Pidgey, alright Froakie, it's time for our first battle. Froakie, Froakie responded as he hopped towards the Pidgey. Pidgey saw that Froakie was ready to battle and that Ash was going to try and catch the tiny bird Pokemon. With that, Ash and Froakie began to battle while Serena and Fen Ekin stood there and watched. Froakie used Pound. Ash yelled out. Froakie jumped up and landed a pound on Pidgey, but Pidgey would counter right back with Gust. Froakie was blown back and landed right on his feet. Now use Bubble, Ash yelled out. Froakie unleashed a flurry of bubbles at Pidgey which gave the tiny bird Pokemon some damage. Then without further action, Pidgey fell to the ground, and the female Pokemon was now weakened. Ash pulled out a Pokeball ready to make the capture. All right, we have weakened Pidgey. When a Pokemon is weakened, it makes the chances of capturing the Pokemon a lot easier, Ash said turning his hat backward, Pokeball, go. Ash threw the Pokeball and it landed on Pidgey sucking it in, the Pokeball wiggled one time, two times, then three times, and then it dinged. Ash Ketchum has just caught his first Pokemon. I did it, Ash said walking up to the Pokeball picking it up, I caught a Pidgey. Way to go, Ash, your first ever capture, Serena said clasping her hands. Yeah, I and Froakie did a great job, Ash said giving Froakie a thumbs up. Froakie, Froakie replied. See Froakie, now we have a new friend, Ash said showing Froakie Pidgey's Pokeball. Serena was so happy Ash was able to catch himself a Pokemon, but now she knew it was her turn to get a Pokemon. Serena wanted not only a new friend for herself but also Fen Ekin. Ash, I'm so happy you got a new Pokemon, said Serena who was looking around, now I think it's my turn. Serena and Fen Ekin were starting to survey the area of a Pokemon they could call their friend. Serena looked around and saw another bird-like creature in a shadow. Another Pidgey. Serena questioned. Are you sure you want a Pidgey too? Ash asked. Yeah, I'm going to get that Pokemon, Serena answered. Are you sure that's a Pidgey? Ash questioned looking at the shadow. I'm positive, Serena answered as she and Fen Ekin stared directly at the bird-like creature, Fen Ekin use Ember. Fen Ekin unleashed an Ember attack on the shadow figure, but then the Pokemon turned around only to see Serena and Fen Ekin. The creature revealed itself to be a brown and red bird who looked angry. That angry bird was none other than a Spearow. That's not a Pidgey, that's a Spearow, Ash mumbled. Froakie, Froakie mumbled. Spearow glared at Serena wondering why it would attack like that. The only thing running through Spearow's mind was that she wanted to hurt him. Then without warning, Spearow sent out a loud cry. Spearow. Spearow cried sending out a flock of Spearow to chase after her and Fen Ekin. Uh-oh, Ash mumbled. Run. Serena cried. Ash and Serena began to run as fast as they could with Froakie and Fen Ekin running beside them. A flock of Spearow was now ready to target the two Pokemon trainers and their Pokemon. I can't believe they want to kill us. Serena cried out. Maybe because you attack Spearow from behind, Ash told Serena as he kept running. Attack from behind. Serena questioned while she kept running. Yeah, when I and Froakie fought Pidgey, Pidgey at least knew we were going to battle, Ash explained, but you and Fen Ekin attack Spearow from behind which angered it. I don't know if it's a male or female yet, but Spearow tends to have a great high temper, causing it to do what it's doing now. You mean try to kill us? Serena asked. Yes. Ash cried out, we can't attack Pokemon from behind like that because we don't know what they could do. Remember that next time you see a wild Pokemon. Okay, I will, Serena responded as she kept running, if there is a next time. The two trainers and their Pokemon kept on running. Froakie and Fen Ekin knew that these were going to be the two humans that were going to be their friends, but how can they be their friends if they put them in danger like that? 
All Froki and Fen Egan could do were keep on running. Looks like it's the end of the line, Ash said looking ahead to see a cliff. Ash, Serena, Froki, and Fen Egan all stopped at the edge of the cliff. There was nowhere else to go except down where a river was. Time was running out as the Spiro flock began to close in, and all Ash could do was look around frantically. I say we jump, Ash told everyone. What? Serena exclaimed. There's a body of water down this cliff, and I don't see any other way we can outrun them, Ash angrily explained, do you have any other options, Serena? Because if you don't, we can be pecked to death by these Spiro that you pretty much brought in. No, Serena answered. Then let's jump. Ash yelled. Serena knew Ash was angry, but it was mainly due to the situation they were in. Without further comment, Ash and Serena called back their Pokemon so they could be safe, and the two jumped down the cliff and into the river. Ash and Serena safely landed in the river where they managed to lose the Spiro. The only thing the two could do was swim along with the flow of the river in hopes of getting away. They saw some Magi Carp, Paliwag, and Goldeen swimming under the water. Finally, Ash and Serena managed to climb out of the river and back onto the surface. Ash was able to pull himself out and then he grabbed Serena's hand to pull her out. The two were drenched. Are you alright? Ash asked. Yeah, I think so, Serena answered breathing heavily. I'm sorry I snapped at you like that, Ash replied hugging Serena. It's okay Ash, we were just in a scary situation, Serena calmly said. Then the two started to notice something. The sky was getting dark as storm clouds were rumbling in. Ash and Serena knew it was going to rain soon. Ash, I think it's going to rain, Serena told Ash. You're right, Ash said looking around, we should be getting close to Viridian City so let's, oh crap. Things went bad once again. Not only was a storm coming, but Ash could hear the Spiro as the flock was still coming after them. Ash thought maybe jumping into the river was going to save him and Serena, and cause the Spiro to lose them, unfortunately, that was not the case as being alive was the only thing that happened. I thought we lost them, Ash muttered as he grabbed Serena's hand, let's go. Ash was dragging Serena down the path as the Spiro kept on going after them. They had to keep outrunning the flock, and then it started to rain. The two couldn't afford to get hurt, but the Spiro was just too fast, and then Ash tripped on a muddy patch causing Serena to fall too. Ow, Ash yelled out. Are you okay? Serena cried. I think so, Ash answered. He tried to get up but felt a bit of pain in his ankle as he couldn't properly stand. Serena tried to get up as well but she grasped her knee as she was hurt too. This was it, Ash and Serena were too weak to get up. This was the end, the first day of their Pokemon journey, and now they were going to be killed by a flock of Spiro. I guess this is the end, Serena said with tears coming into her eyes. It looks like it, Ash solemnly said looking at her. I'm sorry I got us into this, Serena sincerely said. Hey, it's okay. If this is the end, I'm glad we're going to go down together, Ash said as he got himself closer to Serena, Serena, there's something I need to tell you. Ash was about to speak, and then Froki and Fennekin's pokeballs opened. Despite being in a pokeball, Froki knew the pain Ash was in, and Fennekin could feel the same way for Serena. Froki, Fennekin, we're sorry, Ash told them. We wanted you to know that you could trust other humans, Serena said, instead we put you all in danger because we didn't have good judgment. Just remember Froki, even though we didn't get to have much time together, I love you, Ash said with tears coming from his eyes. Me too Fen Ekin, Serena said crying, I wish we could have more time together. Froki and Fen Ekin knew that Ash and Serena couldn't get up. They saw up in the sky was the angry Spiro flock. It was true that Froka could only seem to get along with Ash, and Fen Ekin could only get along with Serena, but they also had to remember that Professor Sycamore gave them love and care too to reunite with them after summer camp. Froka, 
Broca said sadly. Fen Ecken, Fen Ecken sadly responded. Then they turned around to see the flock of Spiro ready to kill them. When they saw the state Ash and Serena were in being completely helpless and how they cared for them despite the little time they had, Froki and Fen Ecken knew what it meant to be their trainers. They weren't supposed to just battle for their trainers, they had to protect them as well. Ash and Serena were the two humans they felt like they could be friends with and build a strong bond to one day confront Siegfried. It was time to fight for them. Froki unleashed a flurry of bubbles while Fen Ecken kept sending out embers to try and fight off the flock. Ash and Serena were amazed at what they were seeing. Ash, they're fighting the Spiro, Serena said in amazement. I know, but there's too many of them, Ash responded. Froki and Fen Ecken were able to take Spiro out one at a time, but there was just too many Spiro. Froki's bubble attack didn't seem to be completely powerful enough, and Fennekin's ember attack was weakened by the rain. Then in just a matter of moments, Froke and Fennekin were drained of energy and collapsed in exhaustion. Froke. Ash cried out. Fennekin. Serena cried out. Froke, Froke weakly said. Fennekin, Fennekin weakly said. Froke and Fennekin were apologizing to Ash and Serena for not being strong enough to defeat the Spiro flock. Froki and Fen Ecken laid down on the ground knowing the sad truth, they failed them. You did your best guys, Ash told them as he was ready to invite the worst. The Spiro was ready to dive down and strike Ash and Serena. The two hugged each other for support. Ash Ketchum and Serena Gabina were going to die. Serena's eyes came with tears as she was about to say something. Ash, I need to tell you something, Serena told Ash. What is it? Ash said hugging Serena hard. I, Serena responded as she got interrupted. A thunderbolt came out of nowhere striking the lead Spiro that Serena angered causing the Spiro to fall to the ground, and the other Spiro ended up flying away since their leader was defeated. Ash and Serena were shocked to see a thunderbolt come out of nowhere to save them. The Pokemon that launched the attack was yellow with black stripes and a black thunderbolt symbol on its body and looked like a plug. The Pokemon that saved Ash and Serena was an Illicid. You saved us, Ash said to the Illicid. Don't get your hopes up, a voice said, you two should consider yourselves lucky. Then coming out of the trees was a boy with purple hair wearing a dark blue coat, grey pants and purple shoes. He had a cold look on his face as if he were the trainer of the Illicid. The boy pulled out a poke ball and threw it at the defeated Spiro. The ball wiggled three times before it dinged to complete the capture. I figure since the Spiro was the leader, it would not only drive the other Spiro away but could also be the strongest of them, the boy said picking up the poke ball. He then took out what appeared to be a black Pokédex and scanned the poke ball. After scanning the poke ball, the boy clipped the poke ball on his belt. This Spiro is worthy to be on my team, said the boy. Worthy? Serena questioned. Yeah, the Pokédex I have can scan power levels and this Spiro has proven as of now to be a competent Pokémon, the boy explained. I don't know what I want to say, Ash said, thanks again for saving us. Humph, don't mention it. This world is completely dangerous and only strong and smart trainers can make it through. No one is always going to be coming to your rescue, so if you ever get in trouble, you better pray to Arceus you know how to get out of it. I can guarantee you the next time you two get into a deadly situation like that, you won't be so lucky, the boy explained as he began to walk away, well I'm out of here, if you two don't up your game, then go home. People like you will not make it through this world alive. The boy and his illicit departed Ash and Serena, and it was only a matter of time before they were out of sight. Ash and Serena couldn't get up, so they put Froki and Fen Ecken back in their balls, and then crawled over to a hollow tree. They were able to take shelter until the storm passes and the two immediately passed out. Two hours later. The sky cleared up and Ash and Serena woke up and they were able to come out of the hollow tree. They were feeling a bit better since they were mostly bruises. There still was pain, but it wasn't aggravating as when they fell. 
I'm glad we're okay, Ash said hugging Serena. Me too, Serena started accepting the hug. Their poke balls containing Froki and Fen Ekin opened as they came out to see that their trainers were okay. Froki and Fen Ekin were still worn out from fighting all those Spiro, but they felt sad that they weren't strong enough to protect them. Froki, Froki sadly said. It's okay Froki, you did your best, Ash said turning over to Froki and hugging him. Fen Ekin, Fen Ekin said tearing up. I know you did everything to look out for us Fen Ekin, and I'm proud of you, Serena told Fen Ekin as she turned to Ash, that boy was right on one thing. What was that? Ash questioned as he turned his attention to Serena. This world is dangerous, and we can't always have someone showing up at the last minute saving us from danger, Serena explained. Ash looked down at the ground after hearing what Serena told him. It's true, no one is always going to be there, and luck will not always be on their side. Ash and Serena are going to learn that if they ever get into any more trouble, they need to figure out how to get out of it. You're right, we got to try and make reasonable decisions and if we fall into another life-threatening situation, you and I have to make sure we can find a way through, Ash told Serena hugging her hard. We're going to be okay, Serena said wiping a tear and hugging Ash again. Froki and Fen Ekin were even hearing what they were talking about, and they agreed to along with any other Pokemon that were to come with them. Then something unbelievable happened, a majestic colored bird flew over Ash, Serena, Froki, and Fen Ekin. What the hell is that? Ash screamed out. The bird flew past the horizon and over the rainbow leaving behind a rainbow feather and two patches of glowing white sand that somehow ended up in yellow pouches. It's beautiful. Serena said witnessing the bird. After the bird was out of sight, Ash picked up the rainbow feather as he and Serena looked at it in amazement. Froki and Fen Ekin also noticed the glowing white sand until they heard a voice. You will all have amazing adventures awaiting you. I leave you the rainbow wing which will bring you all eternal happiness, and scared Ash which can revive the dead. The voice echoed. Ash and Serena didn't understand the voice, but Froki and Fen Ekin did. Froki and Fen Ekin were the only ones to hear and understand the words of the voice which happened to be coming from the bird. This majestic bird left behind a rainbow wing which brings eternal happiness, and scared Ash which can revive the dead. Ash and Serena each took a pouch of scared Ash until looking at the rainbow wing again. Serena, Ash said looking at the rainbow wing again, do you think we'll ever see that bird again? I don't know, but I love to, Serena answered. Then, Ash and Serena noticed something out in the distance. It was Viridian City, the piece of civilization closest to Pallet Town. It's Viridian City. Ash happily exclaimed, we can rest up, get our Pokemon back to perfect health, and most importantly get that part needed for our Pokédex. They wanted to put Froki and Fen Ekin back into their Pokeballs but decided to carry them to the Pokemon Center as a good way to bring themselves closer to them. The two Pokemon were still in bad shape from fighting the Spiro, but they knew everything was going to be okay. Despite everything that just happened, the Pokemon were going to learn that there will be great dangers and evil enemies, including Siegfried who was still out there. There were many mysteries that we're going to be uncovered in the world of Pokemon. The journey has only begun for Ash and Serena. Well, Ash and Serena should now be arriving in Viridian City to get Froki and Fen Ekin healed and receive that part to the Pokédex. That's right, Ash caught a Pidgey, and instead of a heroic effort by their Pokemon, they're saved by a Pokemon trainer. I haven't introduced him, but I'm pretty sure you can tell who it was by the description, it was Paul, Paul saved them. Ash and Serena have also seen the legendary Pokemon who we all should know is Ho-Oh leaving behind a rainbow wing and scared Ash which can revive the dead which means somebody will be brought back to life with the scared Ash, and it will occur in the Kanto arc. I won't tell you when, it could be the next chapter. The next chapter does introduce Team Rocket. Stay tuned for the next chapter. That's all for today and thanks for watching and listening. Subscribe the channel for more video.